Albert Einstein was once on a train bound for New York City, and the ticket taker came through to collect the tickets, and Einstein couldn't find his ticket. And he became frantic looking for his ticket, and finally the ticket taker said, it's okay, it's all right, I, I know who you are, don't worry about it, and he left the car. Well, about 20 minutes later, the same ticket taker came back through the car, and he finds Einstein on the floor, crawling around looking for this ticket. He's frantic. And the ticket taker says, really, really, I, trust, I know who you are, Mr. Einstein, I know who you are. I trust that you bought a ticket. It's good enough for me. And Einstein looked at him and he said, it's not a matter of trust, young man, it's a matter of direction. I need that ticket because I don't remember where I was going. <laughs> this is the second week of Toy Box Leadership. Focusing on lessons of Christian leadership that we learned from the toys that we had as kids. Last week we looked at the Slinky Dog and we talked about vision. Today we're going to look at Little Green Army Men and we're going to talk about strategy. Now it seems to me one of the few times you'll find a kid slow down is when you pour out a bag of Little Green Army Men. Because then you can just watch them go to work. Their minds offer great strategic consideration as they meticulously place each, each soldier where they go. And the time spent setting up the scene greatly outweighs the time of the actual battle. And in the midst of all that, those little green army men prove that success is found in the setup. You see, toy soldiers have been the go-to toy for centuries. Did you know that they found miniature military figures in ancient Egyptian tombs? That's how long toy soldiers have been around. In the 17th century, they began to mass produce them, and they were seen as a pastime for the aristocracy. They would sit around and they would make little, uh, little war scenes with their toy soldiers because they had nothing better to do. They'd been made of clay, they'd been made of flour and water, they'd been made of wood, they'd been made of paper, of various types of metals. And then in the 40s, when plastic became much more prevalent, and during World War II, and as a result of World War II, that's when they took on their current form. And as these kids set up these elaborate scenes, they formulate strategic plans. And as they do that, they learn. They learn that good plans take careful thought, they contain multiple steps, and they produced endless scenarios. There was a woman who uh, commissioned an artist to paint her portrait. And when they met together to begin the process, she said to him, I want you to paint me with diamond rings on, and a diamond necklace, and emerald bracelets, and a ruby brooch, and a very expensive gold Rolex. And he said, but, but ma'am, you're not, you're not wearing any of those things. And she says, no, I, I just, I have a plan. It's in case I die before my husband. See, I know he'll remarry, and I want the new wife to go crazy looking for all the jewelry. <laughs> Our purpose is the big picture. But you can't stop there. You have to connect the big picture with your day-to-day -day life. And that's where strategy comes in. Bobby Knight, the winningest coach in college basketball history, said this, the will to win is not nearly as important as the will to prepare to win. So do you have a clear sense of where your life is going? <coughs> Are you headed in that direction? Or some days do you find that you're moving in the other direction or, or almost worse, simply standing still? What about your church? Do we have a plan for the future? And what does the Bible have to say about all of that? As always, the Bible has lots to say about that, but I want to share one particular story that illustrates great, proper, prior planning. It's found in the Gospel of Mark. It's found in three of the four Gospels, but I'm going to share the one from Mark, 14th chapter, beginning in the 12th verse. Here are these words. On the first day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, it was customary to sacrifice a Passover lamb. And Jesus asked his, Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to go to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two disciples and he said to them, go into the city 
and find a man carrying a jar of water. He will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left and they went into the city and they found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. So Jesus sends two disciples. At one point we're told Peter and John to go look for a place. And he says, I want you to, I want you to go and find this guy. But first of all, what I want you all to do is think about more specifically what Jesus said to his disciples. As I said, three Gospels contain this description. That it was before the Passover feast. And there had to be a place for Jesus and the boys to get together and celebrate the Passover. Well, the disciples had no concrete plans for a feast. Seat of the pants is how they were doing things. Fortunately, Jesus had involved in some strategic planning. And that, therefore, he was able to foretell exactly what would happen when, the, when they searched for a place. Because Jesus knew exactly what would happen. So the disciples meet this man with a water pot on his head. And they follow him into a house and they ask where the master's room was. Now it seems to me the man or the men, depending on how you want to interpret this story, whether the guy with the water pot was the same guy who owned the house or not, was clearly a follower of Jesus. And it seems to me that Jesus clearly made some arrangements ahead of time. Jesus engaged in strategic planning in anticipation of this event. You see, because strategic planning has so much more to do than just making a to-do list or keeping a calendar. It involves calculated design and intentional planning. Christians should have a good sense of their God-given destination. And they should be making plans as how to get there. We should know where we want to go. In our spiritual life, in our life together. And we should have a plan for getting there. And there are five checkpoints that help us figure out how we do that. Five checkpoints that lead to success in the strategy phase of growing in spirituality and in spiritual leadership. The first checkpoint is called the checkpoint of involvement. You see, when kids pour the little green army men out on the floor, what do they do first? They get down on the floor with them to play with them. You can't play with little green army men from a distance. Well, the same is true of strategic planning in the church. You have to be able to see things from the ground level. Strategic planning focuses on the big picture, but the place to start is the ground floor. We have to pay attention to what others see when they walk in our door. Were they greeted? Was the building convenient and welcoming to them? Were we convenient and welcoming to them? <coughs> If our goal is to make disciples for Jesus Christ, as we state, who's our target audience? Look around and see things from the ground floor. So the first checkpoint is the checkpoint of involvement. The second checkpoint is the checkpoint of assessment. You see, when kids play with little green army men, the first thing that they want to do once they get down on the floor is see who and what they have. Well, I have gunner guy, and I've got flamethrower guy, and crawling guy, and kneeling guy, and then I got the lame ones. I got the minesweeper guy, and the radio guy, and binocular guy, and nobody wants them. Although I found it interesting when I dumped this bag out, I got six, five crawling guys. They're okay. I got some infantry guys here. I got three binocular guys. I got eight radio guys. Apparently, I'm going to stay well connected while I'm back there hiding. 